Did you know most people don't correct their footage before color grading? I used to be one of those people. But since I started, everything changed. After so many people asking me how I color grade and if they can get my LUTs, I'm finally making the video. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how I color correct my footage and all the little tips and tricks that I use to get the best looking footage as quickly as possible. This is only part one. Part two will be the actual color grading, so subscribe so you don't miss it. For my workflow, I find that using adjustment layers is extremely helpful. An adjustment layer is like a blanket. Anything you do to an adjustment layer, whether it be zooms, color grades, effects, gets applied to everything beneath it. You can go up into the effects tab, and while in toolbox, you search for adjustments. And you can just grab this and drag it on top of your clip. But to make sure we're actually editing on the adjustment layer, we can go into our color tab, make sure we click clips so that these are shown at the bottom, and make sure the adjustment clip is selected. While correcting, I use five different nodes. For anyone new to DaVinci, a node is like an editing layer. <laughs> I almost said adjustment layer. <laughs> to create a new node, you're gonna click Option S on a Mac and Alt S on a Windows. So we're gonna go S, 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 and then we're gonna rename these just cause I get kind of OCD about this kind of stuff. So to rename it, you're just gonna right click and click node label. The first one is gonna be our conversion LUT. The second is gonna be our white balance. The third is gonna be our saturation. The fourth is our exposure. And the fifth is gonna be a skin checker node. Now starting off, we have our correction LUT. As I've mentioned before, I shoot in a specific picture profile outlined in my A7C video setup guide, so go check that out if you haven't. But I shoot in a semi-log profile, so I need to bring it back to a normal color space before I can go on to grading it and making it all pretty. And to do that, I use the Leaming LUTs. These are highly calibrated LUTs that I can just slap right onto my footage to make sure that I have accurate colors. To add a LUT, all you have to do is right click on a node, scroll down to LUT, and then you can go into your library of LUTs and select which one you want. I'm gonna use the Leaming LUT Pro 3, specifically for the Cine 2 profile, because that's, that's what I use. So as you can see, we turn it off, turn it back on, looks kind of weird. It's because the Leaming LUTs don't actually affect the exposure, they're mostly just color. Also, if you don't know how to toggle on and off a node, it's gonna be Command D on a Mac, and I think it's Control D on a Windows. So since the LUT doesn't correct exposure, that's what we're gonna do next. In this note, I adjust both exposure and contrast, but it's important to remember that when you're color correcting, you're just trying to get it back to how it looked in real life. This is just to give us a good baseline for us to actually color grade on top of later on. There's so much happening around here. There's like kids, there's dogs. I mean, I'm at a park, so I guess, but if you're hearing stuff, that's what it is. I got noise canceling on, but you're probably still gonna be hearing stuff. <laughs> So for correcting exposure, I like to always start with the highlights. I typically use the curves to bring the highlights up to somewhere in this middle range from 1023 to 896, somewhere in that thousand range. So for this example, obviously all of this is clipping because it's the light. So I'm gonna consider this stuff over here to be my highlights. And as you can see, while I go over it with my qualifier, it shows in the scopes that this is actually the part that I'm looking at. So grabbing this top one, we're just gonna drag it all the way up until it gets right into the middle, just like that. Now that we have the highlights done, I usually go into the color wheels and drop the shadows a little bit because it looks a bit faded. So we'll drop this down to just 0.01 or something like that. Nothing crazy. And then once you have those two points set, you can adjust the overall exposure of the frame by just grabbing a point in the middle and bring it up or down. I usually like to stay up on this upper range so it affects more of the highlights rather than brings up the shadows. So just a nice little curve, bring up overall exposure to something a little bit more realistic. Then going back to the color wheels, I like to come to this contrast slider and just put it up to something like 1.1, just to give it a little bit of pop. And already we're looking really nice. So now that the exposure is taken care of, we can go back into the white balance. I don't know if this is the correct way to do it, but this is just kind of how I like doing it. I like setting the exposure first so I'm able to see pretty much what my frame is gonna look like, and then I can adjust the colors afterwards. I don't know. White balance could be a entire video in and of itself, but I can simplify it down to two steps for us. As you can see, when I record, I hold up a lens cap before I record anything. And I do this because the Sony lens cap is 17% gray, so it can be used as a really nice baseline for getting your white balance of pretty much any scene. So all you gotta do is hold it in front of your face like this, or whatever your subject is, and you can white balance it using a dropper tool. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. As you can see, we have a cap right here. We can grab our dropper tool, come and click on it. Now we have a color balanced image. With 8-bit footage, since there's not as much color data as 10-bit footage, the white balancing can be a little bit tricky. So what I like to do is I just use a dropper and then go into our gain and turn this down to something like 0.8. So it's not as clinical as using the dropper and we keep some of that original color just in case it gets a little bit out of hand. Another thing is if you see any blatant color casts in the highlights or the shadows, 
You can always go into your wheels and add a little bit of blue, add a little bit of red, just to help balance it out. Now that our white balance is set, we can move on to our saturation. This one's kind of up to personal preference. I don't like to add too much saturation because I have added some in the picture profile that I use. So for this example, we'll just go into the saturation slider and we can just type in 55. And then last but not least, we have our skin checker node. If you come down here to your waveform, switch it to vector scope and then go into the settings, you can turn on this little setting down here that says skin tone indicator and a line will show up inside of your vector scope. This is pretty much just a guideline for where your skin tones should be. Of course, it's gonna differ by every person, but it's a pretty solid guideline for the combination of colors that are in pretty much everybody's skin tones. So using this in conjunction with a mask on my skin, we can make sure that my skin tones fall on this line. To use a mask, all you have to do is right click in here, add alpha output, and then drag an arrow from here to here. Then we can come down here and click our mask and just grab a circle and drag it over our skin tone, reshape it so that it's just getting my skin and check the vectors. And I mean, that's bang on, that's crazy. But one thing I do know is that my skin tone tends to be a little bit more yellow. So what we can do for that, instead of changing the entire white balance, we can just go into the hue versus hue curve and change the orange value. So we can come in here, go to the hue versus hue curve. And then I, I like to click the yellow and the red dots and then get rid of the red and just pretty much change the yellow up and down. You can see it has a pretty significant difference. But looking at the scopes, I just want my skin to be just left of that line. And that's pretty good. Now, since we want to keep this change, we can just get rid of the mask and it'll stay. So coming back into the mask, you just disable it. And there we have it. Here's a little before and after. Boom, boom. To do a full before and after, you can just click Shift D and it'll bypass any and all color grades that you've made to the footage. Not a huge change, like I said. Really just trying to get a good baseline for us to be able to color grade on top of later on. But the best part about this is, if we go back to the timeline, since we did all these adjustments in the adjustment layer, we can just drag this across any other clips to correct them all at once. And now you can see we have a uniform color correction across all of our clips. One of my favorite tricks while color grading in DaVinci is to save these node trees for later use. But before I do this, I like to reset the white balance, exposure, and hue versus hue curve in the skin checker node to make sure we have a good baseline. So to do that, all you have to do is right click, reset node, right click, reset node, and right click, reset node. Then to save everything, you go up to gallery, make sure you're in power grade. As you can see, I already have a couple saved. And you right click, grab still. This will not only save the node structure and all the edits, so you can use it again in this project, but since we put it in the power grade section, it'll show up in every project you work on in DaVinci Resolve. This comes in really handy when you have to correct clips from different places, like in a vlog. You have the tree already set up for you. All you have to do is white balance and exposure, and you're set. Or if you shoot everything in the same place, you can not reset any of those nodes and just save it and have your edits pretty much finished for you already. This is by no means a professional workflow. I'm sure there are a bunch of places I could have gone way more into depth in. But for mine, and I'm sure most of you guys, is this is more than enough. Please give me any advice you guys have for getting better or faster results down in the comments. If you found value in this video, please leave a thumbs up. And part two of this editing process will be coming out next weekend, so make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss the fun part. See you in the next one. Peace.